everybody and welcome. It is finally here. Train Sim World number four. If this happens to be the first video you've seen by me, then my name's Richard and I'm a freight train driver and former passenger train driver based in the southeast of England. Before we jump in, I've got to tell you that all the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own, may not affect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. Furthermore, Dovetail Games have given me the key for this game completely free of charge, but all the opinions are my own. If I don't like something, I'll tell you. Uh, equally, if I like something, I'll also tell you. So, let's jump into Train Sim World 4. So I have had a little play on this. I've played all of about 15 minutes um, just to check that everything was working as intended, which it seems to be at the moment, so that's good news. Um, the, the, mainly what we're going to do on this particular video is we're going to jump into the East Coast Main Line and the Azuma because I think uh, UK-wise that is what, what most people are waiting for. I'm going to have quite a bit of content over the next few weeks covering um, the other routes and covering some of the features, but today's video is just going to be having a look at the uh, LNER at 800. So, choose a route. East Coast Main Line, see last played, I'm giving it all away. Um, my other content hasn't ported over at this point. I am playing on a pre-release version, that's important to emphasise. Um, I am told on release day that everything should be uh, in here and should be ported over okay. So, East Coast Main Line. Um, we've got training modules, free roam. We're going to look at the free roam in another video. Scenarios and timetable. We've got nine scenarios to complete there. But for today's video, we are going to jump into timetable mode. We've got the Flying Scotsman, of course. Again, that's going to be uh, a separate video or a live stream that we do on that. And the Class 66. Class 801 LNER. 801 1 and the 801-2. We'll do the 801-1. And we're going to do about... We're not going to do the full route in this video. We're going to do about half an hour run. Um, what have we got? Hull to London, King's Cross. Do um, drive this service from Doncaster to Grantham. Um... Should we go north to south? Yeah, let's go north to south. That's quite early in the morning, that one. Let's do that one. I'm going to put the weather on to clear because I have a habit of um, not setting the weather to clear. And then it starts raining and it gets really foggy and you can't see the route, which is not ideal. So let's press get started on that. We're going to have a look around the train. We're going to have a look at the route and I'll give you my thoughts on it. So although I am a real life train driver, I do not sign any part of the East Coast Main Line and I don't think I've even ever travelled on an Azuma. So in terms of uh, what the route looks like and the sounds and stuff, I'm, I'm purely kind of going off the comments section. So uh, let me know what you think guys with regards to, to the sounds and how the route looks. Be really interested to get your thoughts on that. So 1 Alpha 1 2, hold to London King's Cross. Drive this LNER service from Doncaster to Grantham. We are an 801 5 car. <laughs> get started. So the first thing I'm noticing as I load in is a little bit of artifacting in places in the distance. There's a little bit of shimmer. I don't know if that's coming across on the stream, um, but I've got quite a lot of shimmer. The overhead line equipment though, which has been updated, they've got a new rendering method on it, does look f fantastic. That That is really, really nice to see. Okay, let's get the train set up and then we'll go and have a little look around it and then we will do some driving. So, unlock doors. Let's um, We'll do safety systems on. Uh, so there we go, we've got our safety systems panel. Vigilance, TPWS and DSD all in the on position. We'll have a quick look around the cab here. Very similar to the 395 cab. There are some, some subtle differences, but very similar. Um, to the 395 cab, but it is a Hitachi train, so it's it's kind of to be expected. Right, so we've got our safety systems on. Set the DRA because we are stood at a red signal. We are key in. Into neutral. AWS is firing off there. TPWS and AWS operational. So it does speak to us because it has the new Mark IV TPWS. Um, we'll set our lights. So we've got full off marker. Um, we'll go on to dimmed. I'm just having a little look around the cab. We'll have a little uh, explore as we get going. Otherwise, we're going to be stood here for ages. So we'll get the train going and then we'll have a little look around. Uh, unlocking doors on the left hand side. So door release there. We can go into diesel mode on this as well. We're currently in electric mode. Um, we 
we got the line vault light there. We can go into diesel mode. We do have some options to start the diesel engine. I did have a little play on diesel mode, and it's it's not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it sounds good, but it, the, the train is very slow. But we can have a little look at that later on. Um, GSMR. Got slight functionality on the GSMR. All we've actually got to do is press the button. We don't need to enter any of the codes manually or anything like that. Which is not at the end of the world. I'm quite pleased that we've got that in there in the first place. Um, but yeah, I've, I've said it even on Train Sim World 3. I would like to have seen uh, GSMR where we have to enter the code manually. But it, it is what it is. Um, I'm pleased we've got some degree of functionality on that. Um, okay, this is a bit weird. We've got a red signal. It's telling me to lock the doors against a red signal, which in real life would be a big no-no. I'm hoping the dispatcher's going to clear that signal. Stop at location, Newark Northgate, Platform 2. That'll be why we've got a red signal. Yeah, so in real life, we wouldn't close the doors until the signal had cleared. Um, but I've got a funny feeling. I don't know for sure, but I think if we don't close the doors, it won't trigger the next event. So let's jump outside while we're waiting for that signal to clear and have a little look. Uh, I believe we might have new track textures as well because the track te track textures do look a lot nicer. Just having a little look round here. It's a good looking train. There's no denying that. It's, it's a good looking train. A little, little explore around Doncaster. I've never been to Doncaster Station. I, I've been through it maybe once or twice. Um, but yeah, never actually got off here. So, Ah, look, we've got one of the diorama scenes going on here. That's pretty cool. So we've got the coffee shop open. There's people sitting there with a mobile phone. There's cups. I do love this, this extra layer of realism. That's really nice. Uh, apparently, if we look at the menu, there's some Easter eggs on here. Loose leaf, green jade cloud tea, Earl Grey, Charles Herbo, turmeric and ginger. Um, dovetail games all nighter. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some um, the Danny special number three there. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there are kind of some Easter eggs in there, so it's worth sort of having a look round um, and seeing what you can find. Oh look, we've got Metro, but it's not Metro, it's the Dove. Is coffee the new water? <laughs> I do like little bits and bobs like that. Anyway, let's jump into the train and get this thing moving right. We've got a green, we've got the route indicator. What I'm going to do is, as we pull out, I'm going to be very quiet so you can all hear the, um, the sounds on the train. Into forward. <laughs> So the first disappointing thing for me as we come out there is we didn't have any clickety-clack as we went across the points. Um, that's one thing I've been advocating for for, for quite a while, something I really sort of sound-wise, clickety-clack across, across the points and, and crossovers would be really nice. So it's quite quiet in the cab, but I believe that is uh, as, as it would be. Most of these modern passenger trains from the cab, they are very quiet. Um, we're good for 120. Let's get a bit of speed in. We will do some outside shots as we go past as well. When we depart, um, the next station's Newark Northgate. When we depart Newark Northgate, um, we'll do an outside shot so you can hear the motors from the outside um, as we depart. So yeah, the new rendering technique on the overhead line equipment there is is much better. It does look much nicer. I do like the horn sounds and I like the little um, the little bit of air leaking you can hear. That's nice, that's nice.
get this quite a nice looking model. Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Some 66s over there. So let's have a little look around the cab and see what we can do. Like I say, this is kind of my first... I've loaded it up to check that it works, but I haven't really had uh, too much of a, a play around and too much of an explore. So um, we're kind of learning together here. <laughs> So let's start on the side panel here. What have we got? We've got our lights. Um, hazard warning lights. Looks like they... Are they working or not? I can't work it out. So the hazard warning lights should make the lights on the front flash. It doesn't look like they're working as they should do at the moment. Um... That's interesting. It's just come up saying the AWS was not acknowledged, resulting in a penalty brake application. I heard the DSD go off, which I did acknowledge. I didn't hear the AWS going off. Um, and we should have had some sort of flashy light over here. If we'd missed the AWS, we'd be expecting the AWS light there to be flashing. So I'm not entirely sure what's gone on there. Just jumping in here with a quick edit, watching it back, the AWS was going off, so entirely my fault. Tea and biscuits with the manager. We're doing well, guys. We're doing well. Uh, yeah. Come back tomorrow, we'll do it properly. See if we can get a nice flyby shot there. Yeah, like I say, that 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 could have been me making a could have been me making a mistake. <laughs> I I genuinely didn't hear anything going off though. Right, okay, so we were playing with the light panel, weren't we? So. Hazard warning lights. So that's turned on, I'm assuming. That should be making the lights on the front front flash. But it isn't. There are no flashy lights on the front of the train. Okay, so that's not working as we would expect it to in real life. In real life, your hazard warning lights make the lights on the front flash. Uh, and that's a warning to, to oncoming trains that there's danger ahead. So if you spot something on the track, something dangerous, as well as pressing the red button on the GSMR, you turn your hazard lights on as well. Um, and if you're driving towards a train and you see hazard lights on the front, then you stop immediately. Um, 29 miles to Newark. HVAC. It looks like we can play with that. It would be nice to have some sort of sound associated with that. I mean, there may well be, but I can't hear it at the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, down lighter. Got cab lights there, reading lights, uh, desk illumination as well. So it'll be interested to see when we get into a tunnel or when we get into the dark how that works. A lot of new trains have got this feature here as well, which is very nice, which is the DSD pedal height. So you can't click it, but in reality, on a lot of modern trains, the height of the DSD pedal, that's the foot pedal the driver has to keep their foot on, like the dead man's handle, uh, can be raised and lowered to make it more comfortable, which is quite nice. So coming around, we've got our driver-only operated monitor screens. Mentioned it on the 700. I would love to see some sort of dispatch system in Train Sim World. Unfortunately, um, we don't have that at the moment. Fingers crossed that that will be in a future release. So yeah, those, those screens are just left completely blank. I think even when we stopped at a station, if you just got something in those screens, it, it would be quite nice. Um, but alas, we don't. Just passing over the neutral section there as well, so we'll probably take the power off. Um, and we've got 110 coming up. We are speeding just a little bit, we get a little bit of break in. So we will look out the window a little bit more. I'm just having a look at some of the in cab systems. Um, we've got a door control panel over here. So door close interlock, door release buttons work, and the signal button. 
doesn't seem to be any sound associated with that at the moment. Like I say, guys, I am playing on a pre-release version. I'm actually recording this on the uh, 20th, so it doesn't actually come out on early access till tomorrow. So it could be that these things have been fixed um, in game, but yeah. It could be that in the 800 you don't get a noise in the cab when you press the signal button. I don't know, but we're definitely not getting anything there um, at the moment. Just keeping the speed at 110. Coming around, we've got our pretty standard controls there and coffee cup holder. Most important bit of equipment in the cab there is the coffee cup holder. Um, line valve emergency. You've got snow brake. I'm not quite sure how that works. We can have a little play with that when we do some of the scenarios with the weather on. Um, pretty standard stuff. TPWS, DRA as we come around. Um, we've got a couple buttons, and these do work because I did play with this earlier. So, forward preparation. If we press that and go outside... Uh, the hazard lights are now working. Okay, that's... Yeah, I think I think I had that the wrong way around in the cab. So, yeah, a couple of hatch working. Um, not sure how we close it, though. And then we can do the one at the rear by pressing that button as well. Um, we've got a train wash button. Normally what the train wash button does is limits the train speed to 3 miles per hour. Um, and it also seals all the doors. Um, it certainly does on the 395s. Not sure about the 800. But on the 395s the, the doors have got like pneumatic seals on them. It pushes the doors closed. Um, wheel slip slide button. Not sure how what the functionality on that is. We'll have to have a little play with that one as well. Um, ETCS. Acknowledge. That's going to be interesting. We don't have ETCS on the East Coast Main Line yet, but that is coming. So it'll be interesting to see if we get any functionality um, ETCS-wise. Maybe an update in the future. Uh, AWS Acknowledge button. We've got door controls for the right-hand side. Train for Acknowledge. We've got a horn. I'm a fan of the way the horn sounds. I am a fan of the way the horn sounds. Um, electric mode. Pantograph up, pantograph down. Uh, windscreen wipers. Demister, which doesn't work unfortunately. Windscreen washer doesn't work. Um, then engine start, diesel equipment over here. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Quite a lot of functionality in the cab. There's a little, few things that don't work, but we, we do have a good degree of functionality in the cab. Maybe if we press the uncouple button, it will close the hatch. Press and hold it, maybe. Not sure. We'll forward preparation, press and hold. There's got to be a way of closing that. On the, on the 395, there is a switch on the back panel, so we're going to have a little look at that um, in just a second. So let's have a quick look at the TMS system here. Uh, TMS train management system. Line voltage, 25,000 volts. Outside temperature, that's a nice little feature. Um, 31 degrees. <laughs> it's, it's quite a warm day. Uh, we got our current speed on there, 124 miles an hour. That's that's nice to have on there. I like that. As well as one delta. Well, that's a bit weird because the TMS is showing we're one delta two one, and the um, GSMR is showing we're one alpha one two. So that doesn't quite marry up. Um, we got a little, some degree of functionality on here, so auto announce we can't go into. Traction status we've got. Um, eco driving we can't. Engine status we can't. Event we can't. Brake, uh, brake status we can. Um, pantograph selection. I guess we can choose the front or the rear pantograph. Um, HVAC, heating, ventilation and air conditioning we can't. Journey details, saloon status, dual mode. Uh, no, and log out we have got no access to any of that. Auto announce doesn't do anything. That'd be nice future feature possibly <laughs> who knows um, we got a sound volume level thing there but I don't think the TMS makes any noises at the moment I've not certainly not heard any of the time I've been playing um, got a brightness screen as well warning for 120 that's definitely got the AWS right that time We're doing 119, so we're absolutely fine for that. Uh, yep. 
and we've got the dark screen button there which turns it off. Uh, door selection. Don't think we've got any access to the door selection screen there as well. So some degree on the, the some degree of functionality on the TMS, uh, which is also pretty good to see. So we're focused on the route a little bit now. We will go for a walk through the train. We'll have a little look at the route and see what's going on. One of the things I'm noticing at the moment, again, I, I will emphasize, I am on a pre-release version of the game. Um, to, to put that into perspective, the pre-release version of the game, the, the download for the game is like 30 gigabytes as opposed to, I think, like 10 gigabytes for the actual game. So there's a lot of stuff that's not compressed. But I am getting, at the moment, I'm getting 62 frames per second. <laughs> I am running off of a RTX 3090 and a Intel i9 with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, just to put that into perspective a little bit. Um, I'm also recording this video on the same machine, so that can have a bit of an impact on the frame rate. But yes, yeah, so currently getting 62 frames per second. I am noticing though a little bit of jumping here and there, and a little bit of, of buffering and frame lagging. Again, I'm hoping that's because I'm on an early access version of the game. It's not too bad; it is relatively smooth, but there is there is a little bit of stuttering every now and again. In in terms of how realistic the route is, I can't really comment on that. Having having travelled this route maybe once or twice in my life, I, I'm sort of. Um, going to be interested to see what you guys have got to say in the comment section. One of the things that does bug me, that objective marker bugs me, I'll talk about that in just a second. One of the things that does bug me is the way these shadows are loading in on the right hand side. This is not a new thing to Train Sim World 4, this is a Train Sim World 3 thing. Um, it's something to do with, with performance and kind of balancing things out and stuff like that, but it just it looks very jarring to me. I've got all my and the way we've just gone through that tunnel and the lighting inside the train didn't dip down. I'm, I'm, I'm aware that this is coming across as, as quite critical <laughs> at the moment. I'm just trying to be as honest as I can. Um, it, it could be that we're going to get a day one, a day one patch, or you know, I am on a pre-release version, so I'm, I'm going to put a lot of stuff down to that. Yeah, the way these these shadows are kind of loading in on the sides and in the distance, I don't know if it, it comes out on the screen, but that on the on the on the video, but that is a little bit jarring in my opinion. So let's keep a little bit of power in. I am really liking the overhead lines, though. Uh, the, the fact that we can see those quite far off in the distance now, I'm I'm really liking those. get my speed down just a little bit. So I spoke about this objective marker. I've got the objective marker turned on and there's a good reason for that. Um, I did have a little run on this. I'd done a Doncaster up to Grantham earlier on just to test everything was okay. Using the new HUD. Now I, I do like the new HUD. I, I will say I do like the track. We've got the track monitor up here in the top right which shows us what's coming up. I do really like that. Um, and I really like the way this works here. It's, it's kind of much cleaner and much more simplified and I'm actually using the speedo within the train and, and looking at that and the gauges here rather than looking at the gauges down on the, on the, on the bottom right on the HUD so yeah I, I do really like this the only problem I found earlier going along at 125 miles an hour is I managed to miss Grantham um, because this little bar here will start counting down but by the time that started flashing at me and counting down it was too late to get me brakes in and the station didn't show up on the bar on the right hand side here now maybe there's something in the settings I can fiddle with I, it might just be that I've got my settings wrong um, so I ended up shooting going straight through the station which anyone that watches my live streams will know that's not an uncommon thing that's why I drive freight trains and not passenger trains for a living um, yeah, so that's why I've turned the objective marker on, so I've got a fighting chance. So we'll, when we come towards uh, new at Northgate, we'll have a look and see what the, the, the HUD display does. Lighting on the outside of the train looks pretty decent though. That does look pretty good. And we are speeding as well, let's get a little bit of braking. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the back panel, see if there is a way... What have we got? 8.5 miles. Um, 
Oh, we've got a yellow signal coming up, actually. We can see that on the track monitor, so... We will just respond to that before we do anything. Two yellows. Let's get a little bit of break in. Just cleared up to a green, so what we're going to do, two yellows up to a green, suggests that we're catching something up or we've caught something up. So we just reduced the speed slightly, um, but we are still running on green signal, so we don't need to don't need to sort of reduce it too much. We just want to make sure that the next signal is green and we don't catch up the train in front. What have we got? 6.9 miles to go. 6.8. Looks like the next one's come up to green as well, it has, yeah. So we'll quickly jump out the seat. Um, we'll have a look at the back panel. Do, 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 do. Unit hatch closed. There we go. Uh, auxiliary off so we can turn the train off and do a cold start, which is quite good. Loco hauled mode. Oh, okay, that's interesting. And we've got our TPWS controls there as well. We should probably put that to normal. In reality, you wouldn't need to put that to normal. As soon as you activate the TPWS it would already be in normal. Um, and we've got some guard controls. I'm not sure what the deal is with guarding the train. Uh, that is something we can have a look at when we do the live streams. Uh, let's get back in the driver's seat for a few minutes. We are running pretty late. We should have been to Northgate at 8.20. Oh yeah, of course we had that emergency stop because of the AWS Driver error or train error, you decide. So the kind of, the things I'm picking up on at the moment are very route and train specific, so they're not kind of Train Sim World 4 issues. We have got, coming up to a neutral section, we have got sort of all the new Train Sim World features with the, the rain, um, the volumetric fog, the, 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 the enhanced rain textures, um, the public editor of course, we've got the livery editor, scenario planner, um, uh, free roam mode, photo mode, and all those bits and bobs. So we are going to play with those on, on future videos, but I kind of just wanted to jump in because I know that the main thing for a lot of people with the Train Seawell 4 release is the um, the LNER Azuma and the East Coast Mainline. Again, I... It's a personal thing. I wish they'd done West Coast, uh, East Coast Mainline South. It would have been nice to have the Peterborough uh, to King Cross bit because we could have used the 700 on it amongst other things. Um, but, you know, they, they've got their reasons for doing it. They said it would have been too similar to other routes that they've released. And I, whilst I do kind of see that, yeah, I, I still think it would have been nice to have the, the south section. I think the south section is probably a more interesting bit of route, if I'm being honest. Um, but that's just my opinion on it. I know there's quite a few people that are happy to see this section of the East Coast Mainline models. I mean, in an ideal world, we want the whole lot. <laughs> but if you speak to most people, most people will say they want this route, that route, and every route. So I suppose that it comes down to the developers to make the choice, and this is the choice they've made, and um, that's what we've got at the end of the day. So 2.3 miles to Newark. I'm keeping an eye on the gauges up here and the gauge on the side here. We've got a 100 restriction coming up. Let's get a little bit of break in for that. We should have Newark flat crossing as well. I think it's this side of the station. Let's have a look. So I've got nothing showing on my track monitor as yet. We're still 1.5 miles out. I'm going to get a little bit of braking because I'm not 100% sure how this handles braking wise. Yes, you can see we're 0 0.9 miles out, and I've got no indication up here on the track monitor to the top right, and I've got no indication here on the bar. There's Newark Flat Crossing just there. We did have a clickety-clack going across Newark Flat Crossing, though, to be fair. Ah, um, uh, yeah, so that's just come up, like, a thousand yards away. That's just started flashing at me. In reality, if we were still doing 125 miles an hour, you would not be stopping at this station. That's why I've got my objective marker turned on. Um, I don't like it because it gets in the way of the screen. 
little bit of route knowledge though, and a little bit of playing the route. We, we could probably sort of work out roughly where the stations are. Um, which obviously, if you are playing these games, Huddleys, that's what you want to be doing. You want to be route learning. But it, I think this should show us a little bit more in advance. There might be something in the accessibility options or, or something I can do to play with that. Um, so that's something I'm going to have to explore. Have we got stop car markers though? That is the big thing. Have we got stop car markers on the platform? Please tell me we've got stop car markers. I don't think we've got stop car markers. There are no stop car markers. <laughs> That's tea and biscuits with a manager, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, just confirming that. Yeah, no stop car markers on the platform. That is one of my biggest bugbears. This is not having stop car markers on the platform. I like to play... When I get a bit of route knowledge, I do like to play Huddleist. And not having the stop car markers, you, you turn all the guides off. You've got no indication of where you're actually supposed to stop. It's like, no, come on, stop car markers, please. <laughs> I'm quite passionate about stop car markers, can you tell? Anyway, let's get the doors open. Let's do that in an external view so we can sort of hear the door noises. And check them opening. We've got some birds tweeting and we've got some announcements going off in the back, which I'm, I'm definitely a fan of. I like that. Let's have a quick look around uh, Newark because we're here. Again, I've never been to Newark, so I'm not really able to comment too much. Person on phone. That is Train Sim World 4 edition. I'm liking that. And their lips are moving as well, pretending to talk. I'm sure I saw their lips moving. There we go. And person with suitcase. So there's a lot more variety in the NPCs, which is which is really nice to see. Animated air conditioner unit on the wall there. Yeah, there's a lot more variety in the NPCs. And we've got these diorama scenes here as well. Oh, look at that. Network rail person or, or track worker with hat on table, phone on table. Yeah, I, I the NPCs, non-player characters, do look a lot, lot better. I'm, I'm... There's a stop car marker. Class 8OX all. I'm, I'm definitely a fan of those. Definitely a fan of those. We're just going to run back up to in free camera if we can get that far. Newark flat crossing and just have a little look at that. Doopy doopy doo. It's further back than I thought it was, to be fair. Which is a very unique feature on UK railways. I think Newark Flat Crossing might be the only one in the UK. And I'm not particularly familiar with the geography, but I believe that's the line round to Lincoln, uh, around the corner there. Yeah, in interesting bit of interesting bit of railway. Definitely an interesting bit of railway. Okay, we're back in the cab. Uh, we are well late, so let's get the door shut. We are going to turn the AWS off because we are going to go for a little walk through the train. So we're going to we're going to make sure all of our system safety systems are isolated, so we don't stop unexpectedly as we're driving along. Um, and we're off to Grantham, which is where this train will terminate. So, I did promise you a... Here we go. Oh, we've been bold! <laughs> we've been bold in train sim. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. That wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> never mind, never mind. So the route does look, like I say, I, I, I am, I'm, other than the stop car markers, so far, I am a fan of the route. I'm, the, the rendering issues and stuff, that is a Train Sim World thing. That is an annoying Train Sim World thing. 
Um, so yeah, that that's not root specific. For me at the moment, the root looks looks pretty decent. It does look pretty nice. Just wondering why the AWS wasn't going off there, but of course I have isolated the AWS. Um, okay, so we've got 13 miles to our next objective. We've got a yellow signal coming up. Let's just... See what we get on the signal, and then we'll go for a little walk around the train and have a little play. So, like I say, over the next few days slash weeks, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of content on Train Sim World 4, showing you off the Antelope Valley, um, having a go in Dresden as well, and the the other route, which is just completely gone from my mind. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, and we'll be doing some full length runs on this as well, having a look at the weather um, and the different the new features within Train Sim World 4 as well. The only thing I'm probably not going to look at on this channel will be the public editor, uh, the PC editor, because that is way beyond my computing ability. Um, I can just about drive a train, let alone edit a route. So that's, that's something I'm not going to be having a look at, unfortunately. So let's go for a little walk through the train. It's on autopilot, it's driving itself. We won't be too long. Into the passenger compartment, the vestibule. Oh, we've got the catering area. Oh, that is... That was two yellows to green. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be doing this while we're going along. And we've got the first class area. Lovely. No working toilets. Welcome to first class. Got no working PIS inside. Okay, I thought we would have had working PIS inside. And then through into standard class. Yeah, the, the modeling, modeling on the inside of the train looks quite nice. There's a lot of passengers on here as well. I am a fan of that. Oh, we do have... I did see something flash across there then, so maybe we do have working PIS internally. Right, okay, here is the big test. Is he going to let me open the doors while we're going along? This is the big moment. No! No! No, it's not supposed to do that. It's not supposed to do that. I've got a bit of artifacting here as well. It's not supposed to do that. No, 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 no. Um... It has put the emergency brakes on though, which is good. That is good that it's put the emergency brakes on. But it's not supposed to let me open the doors as we're driving along. That should not be a thing. No, I don't want to give up control. That should not be a thing. That should definitely not be a thing. Um. Let's get back to the cab. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, tea and biscuits for the manager. Um, yeah, that 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 should not be a thing that happens. Hangs head in shame. I've got a button for that. That should not happen. Praying for a day one patch that fixes these little things. Um, it's it's not the end of the world. I mean, Edinburgh Glasgow had that issue and they fixed it. I'm sure it can be fixed pretty quick, pretty quickly and pretty easy. But it's not supposed to do that. Okay, so what have we got? 9.1 miles to Grantham. Let's have a little play with the diesel mode then. Let, let's do that. So we've got the, um, the 801 that we've got in game. isn't the full diesel version. I think the full diesel versions or the, the full hybrid versions of the 802. The 801 only has the donkey engine in it. Uh, sort of the last mile engine. So it's not very powerful at all. So if we press engine start or diesel and then engine start And 
and then pan down. Oh, I like the clonk on the pantograph as the vacuum circuit breaker closes. That's that's a nice sound effect. Um, we've got engine status. We can't get into that menu. Okay, I think the engine is possibly running. Let's try and take power and see what happens. Close the doors before applying power. Are we in diesel mode? Have I done this successfully? It is moving. We are on an uphill gradient, so that is moving. The level crossing and the degree of traffic on the level crossing is nice. <laughs> Mooing cows in the field. That that that's good. That's a nice touch. That is really thrashing the diesel engine. Yeah, so we do have diesel mode, but unfortunately it's not very good. The the reason they wanted a model I think and do correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know my eight hundreds. I believe it's the eight oh two which has the full um has the full kind of the, the the full hybrid mode on it. I believe it's the 802. They wanted a model an 802, but the reason they didn't is because when they turned up at the LNER depot to record sounds and get reference material, you know, LNER the, the last thing LNER and Hitachi are interested in is is making a computer game. Their business is to run trains. So all they could provide unfortunately on the day was an 801. So so that's what they've modeled. Um it's a little bit of a shame. So they said they cut, they kind of could have bodged it and made an 802 and they could have just kind of, you know, winged it. But they wouldn't have had the right sounds. So it wouldn't have been authentic. So that's why they've gone with with the 801 and done it that way. It is starting to pick up a little bit now. That is quite painful though. That is painful. Let's see if we can change to electric on the move. So you press and hold the electric button. And then go pan up. And then... Are we now back in electric? We are, because it's accelerating very quickly. And we can go... Engine stop on the diesel. Has the engine stopped on the diesel though? It has, yeah. Although it does sound like in the cab the diesel engine's still running. Well that could that might just be me. Oh, there we go. Looks like you've got to press and hold the engine stop button. Like I say, I, ha I haven't read the instruction manual for this. I'm purely just winging it. Um, which, you know, I'm giving you my, you guys my sort of... My, my realistic and honest first impressions of, of what I'm seeing. So, yeah, really interested to hear your thoughts so far. There are a couple of... The, the, the doors opening when they're not supposed to. And the stop car marker issue is just like... Uh, it just makes me want to rip my hair out. That sort of thing going on. Uh, we can put the safety systems back in as well now. We'll do that as we're not going to leave the cab again. Um, do you like the sound as the other Azuma goes past? That's nice. There does seem to be a little bit of a lack of AI traffic on the route, and I know we, you know, the only thing we've really got for the East Coastway is is the um, is the Azuma. So hopefully they're going to release another train that we we can use on the, this route. That would be quite nice, I reckon. get this train down to Grantham and then um, that is going to be the end of this little little kind of preview first impressions uh, first impressions video like I say I'm going to be doing quite a lot of streams over the next few weeks so do, do tune into one of those if you can and this like I will say this video has been more sort of a review of 
of the route and the train rather than Train Sim World 4. So I think for me, the, the thing I'm most looking forward to about Train Sim World 4 at the moment is the Omskirk Blackpool route by Just Trains. That looks phenomenal and I'm thoroughly looking forward to getting my hands on it. This is a nice route. This isn't my my preferred type of route. My preferred type of route in Train Sim is, is kind of like... Um, London to Brighton or something like that where you've got a mixture of fast running and stopping I find the kind of hours and hours, well not hours and hours, but I find the kind of long distance between stations gives me little to do when I'm playing, I like to be to be sort of um, a little bit more engagement when I'm playing the game um, got a 1.15 coming up to get a little bit of braking for that and we are speeding yeah I like to be a little bit more, sort of more engaged when I'm playing the game um, so I, I prefer routes that have got a little bit more going on, but that's just just personal preference. So yeah, interested to hear any guys that the any guys and girls that have travelled on the East Coast Main Line regularly and have got experience with the Azuma. I'd be very interested to sort of hear your comments on it in the comment section below. Looking at it from an outsider, as someone that doesn't sign this train and doesn't know the route, doesn't know the traction, for me. It looks nice and it drives nice, and that, that's the main thing. I, I think I could get a lot of enjoyment out of this uh, out of this route. I'm trying to decide whether I like the new overhead line textures or not. I think I do. Um, my headlights are on. Why am I getting no light reflection in the tunnel? weird things are happening. I'm sure my headlight's on, isn't it? Oh, it's on dimmed. We could put it on full. Maybe that's the reason why. And we are coming down to Grantham. We are ten minutes late as well now, which is quite an achievement. That's practically on time for an LNER service. <laughs> All views and opinions are solely my own and all of that good stuff. Uh, right, so 1.4 miles. Again, look, 1.4 miles out. I've got nothing on the. I've got nothing on the track monitor, and my, my little bar's not flashing, so I really do have to have this turned on at the moment. I am going to have a little play in the settings and see if that's a me problem, though. Uh, two yellows, so we're getting a little bit of braking. Start getting the speed down. Probably want to be getting a little bit more braking than that. One yellow. Red ahead, red ahead, red ahead. So yeah, like I keep banging on, do let me know your thoughts uh, down in the comment section below. I'd be really interested to hear um, you know, what everyone else is thinking about this route at the moment. If you haven't already as well, do please consider liking this video and subscribing. We do do regular uh, Train Sim World streams, Train Sim Classic streams. Um, as well, on the channel as well, you will find my rarely updated Train Driver rules and Train Driver vlog series as well. Um, red ahead, so red's at the end of the platform here at Grantham. Let's see if we can do... Have we got stop car markers here at Grantham? We are coming in very slow. Let's see if we can do a external view stop. There is an AWS magnet right there as well. I'm aware of that. I'm going to have to make sure I'm acknowledging that. There we go. <laughs> Nice, I like the brake squeals, we stopped that, that that's very good. Um, yeah, so just noticing here as well, Grantham, we've got no stop car markers again, which is which is a little bit on the irritating side. Um, I won't bang on about stop car markers. <laughs> I get a reputation for it. Um, welcome to Grantham, having a little look round. 
Again, never been to Grantham stations, so can't possibly comment. But to me, looking as an outsider with no route knowledge, it looks nice. That the station modelling and the route modelling is, is very good. LNER, water refill point, that's a nice feature. I know I haven't opened the doors, it's because I want to have a look around the station. If I open the doors, it will just end the scenario. Um, Oh, we got some good adverts everywhere. That's that's nice to see. Messages. Some messages are best left unread. Dovetail. <laughs> DGTV. D. Dovetail Games TV. Like it. Like it. Okay, so let's get those doors open. Let's end the scenario. See what sort of score we got on that. Um, we should get a pretty bad score. It should not be a very good score. <laughs> Because, uh, to be honest with you, that was pretty atrocious. And I should be setting my DRA because I am stopped at a red signal as well. So there we have it, guys. I would say Train Sim World 4, but... I mean, it is Train Sim World 4, but there we have it. East Coast Main Line. LNER Azuma. That's not the full route, obviously. The full route does go Peterborough to Doncaster. Do let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Very, very interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Ah, no, this is cool. Okay. Uh, silver medal. Right, okay. So, score breakdown. Distance driven. Safety systems use NA. Cab setup correct NA. I did you. I suppose maybe because I turned them off a couple of times. Uh, speeding minus 65. No wipers in rain zero. Stops. Coupling junctions. Vehicles left unsafely. Uh, that's, that's interesting that we've now got sort of a breakdown of how the score works. That That's nice. I, I like that. And we got the highlights there where we were speeding. I, I am a fan of that. I am definitely a fan of that. Should have got a better score, though. Should have got a better score. Yeah, so there we go, guys. Do tell me what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd be really interested to hear that. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. I am going to be doing quite a lot of content, like I've said several times. Um, we're going to be doing some live streams as well, where you can jump into the chat and give me your thoughts uh, live as we go along. Uh, we will try and do a two or three hour kind of overview of Train Sim World 4 live stream. And I will advertise that on the channel as soon as I know what my work roster is for the next week. Because I'm a real life train driver. And I am at the mercy of my roster clerk. So as soon as I get my work schedule, um, I'll, I'll publish something and let you know when I'm going to be streaming that. Thank you very, very much for watching, guys. Thank you very much to Dovetail Games to, for, for giving me this key free of charge. Um, I know to the devs at Dovetail Games, I know I can do a little bit critical at times and stuff. But you guys generally do do pretty, you know, you do do great work. Um, so yeah, keep, keep up the good work. Please fix the stop car markers. Please stop me opening doors as I'm going along. Um... And then you get an extra star in the reviews. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, everybody. And I shall see you in the next one. Don't forget to check out the Discord and social media. Almost forgot to say that. And we'll say it again. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video or stream. Bye for now.